the Hub on Hollywood. I'm James. Jamie is on assignment, but we still love movies. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, today, we're talking about how Disney is changing gears, focusing less on the box office and more on streaming services and what that may mean for the movie theater industry. Also, a new movie filming in Massachusetts reveals a, a huge all-star cast, uh, cast and full of cameos. We'll, we'll be getting into that. Speaking of casting, we have casting calls. Several really good ones that you're not going to want to miss on camera, uh, dialogue, uh, commercials, feature films. You're going you're gonna to want to stick around for this uh, this week's casting calls. Also, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the MCU edition. A lot of rumors spreading around regarding uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man 3, Doctor Strange being a part of it, and the possibility of the multiverse. And not only is Electro, Jamie Foxx's Electro, possibly appearing in this film, but also many rumors saying Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker and Spider-Man, uh, respectively Spider-Man, uh, they're going to be showing up in Spider-Man 3. Are those rumors credible? We're getting right down into it. Uh, but first, thanks again for watching. Uh, if you are watching us on YouTube, uh, please subscribe, please like, uh, comment down below, join the conversation, really does help. Also, if you're watching us on Facebook, give us a share, uh, tell your friends, tell your mother, tell your family, uh, The Hub on Hollywood. Also, uh, yeah, comment down below, let us know what you think. We love hearing from you guys. Uh, if you're listening to us on any of the major podcasting streaming services like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Uh, thank you very much. Take us on the go wherever you go if you can't be in front of a screen. We're also on social media. We're on Instagram and on Twitter at Hub on Hollywood. Give us a follow, give us a like, show us some love. Thank you very much. Uh, but first, uh, we're, we're going to go right into it. Disney says it's going to focus more on providing original content for its streaming services. Disney CEO Bob Chapek says given the success of Disney Plus, it plans to accelerate their direct-to-consumer business. Uh, he told CNB, uh, CNBC that this transition or, or refocus was going to happen eventually, but the pandemic just sped this thing up given the great success uh, that the company has seen with Disney Plus. Mulan, of course, skipped the movie theater after Tenet didn't have such a impressive turnout when it did hit theaters. Uh, Mulan went to streaming on Disney Plus, but for thirty bucks, hey, it worked. Uh, Disney made a lot of money. A lot of people watched it, and uh, that format seems to be uh, seems to be the future for Disney Plus. Just last week, they announced that their new Pixar film, uh, Soul, will not be. Uh, released in theaters this November, but is actually pushed back to December 5th, and it's going to be uh, appearing on Disney Plus first. And so it's it's already begun. And now the big question with Disney announcing its its restructuring of, of its of its business model, what does this mean for for movie theaters? If Disney goes with distributing its movies to its own services or through its own means, this is even more bad news for the for the movie going experience and of course movie theaters. Theaters. Already hit by the pandemic, theaters are bleeding money right now. They've been begging uh, Congress for financial relief for a stimulus uh, to be included in the next stimulus package. Uh, Regal Cinemas closed all of its uh, all of its theaters in the U.S. and in Britain. AMC says it will remain open, but it could run out of cash by the end of this year. Not looking good. So. When you're talking about removing movies from the theaters, uh, this could be the first nail in the coffin uh, for the movie theater going experience. Disney already owns the most valuable properties uh, um, out there, including Marvel, Star Wars, um, their Pixar lineup. If you remove those from the equation, you have, of course, fewer big smash blockbuster films showing up at the theaters, bringing people in. But also one big important thing to, to remember is in 2019 of the top 10 billion dollar generating films of last year, seven of those were Disney properties. So sure, smaller movies, smaller independent films may be able to be released in theaters more often, uh, but, but you won't be able to really fill the seats. Will the demand one be there to see some of these smaller independent films that may get uh, more, more showtime? Uh, but 
that aside, you're also literally restricted from filling up the seats because of the pandemic. And so if you can't fill in the theater with uh, without these big blockbuster Disney films, um, and if other studios go in that direction, on top of that, you add on the pandemic and the restrictions that that comes with, what what's left for the movie theaters? That's that's a big that's a big you know mystery right now. Patty Jenkins, the director of Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 1984, that movie by the way still still slated to come out in theaters at this time. Uh, she gave out a dire warning saying if movies are pulled from the movie theaters, uh, the movie theater going experience is going to go extinct. And and I'm all for seeing the movie on a big screen with an audience. I think it adds to the experience. If it's a horror movie, you can sense the the tension, the fear, the anxiety in the in the theater. When it's a comedy, um, you can you can let out those howls if <laughs> the whole row with you along with you is roaring with laughter. Also, I think it just adds to it. And so uh, with this latest development, this announcement coming from Disney, just things just keep looking, looking worse and worse for the industry, the, the movie theater industry. Um, you know, not good. Uh, but one of those films that may be coming out to the movie theaters, if it doesn't go straight to VOD, actually, I take that back. This movie I'm going to be talking about right now uh, is coming out on Netflix next year. Don't look up. This is the all-star cast uh, that I was just talking about in the beginning of the of the episode. Uh, this new movie is preparing to film in Massachusetts, and it involves a cast that, that directors would kill for. Uh, Don't Look Up, a comedy directed by Adam McKay. He's directed Talladega Nights, Anchorman, Anchorman 2, The Other Guys, Vice. Um, this movie is about a pair of astronomers who try warning everyone that a giant meteorite uh, will destroy Earth in six months. Uh, we first heard it was starring Jennifer Lawrence and Rob Morgan, but af- after that, not much else. That was until this week when the longer cast list was released. Now, we're looking at, for this for this um, apocalyptic comedy, uh, we're looking at Leonardo DiCaprio, Timothy Chalamet, Kate Blanchett, Meryl Streep, Jonah Hill, Matthew Perry, Ariana Grande, Kid Cudi, among the the list. Now, this movie coming out, as I mentioned, on Netflix. This is the first DiCaprio Netflix film. So, I guess that's a big deal. And people are making a kind of a big deal on, online about that. So, um, really big casting uh, opportunity for 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 people out there. Uh, you can bet that they're going to be looking for extras. So, stay tuned on the Hub on Hollywood. We'll give you those casting calls. And uh, speaking of those casting calls. Uh, we have quite the few, and they're pretty impressive this week. So let's get right into it. Uh, Boston Casting, looking for a French-speaking actress. This is for a chance to get on TV. It shoots between October 21st and November 9th in the greater Boston area. Uh, send your headshot, resume, acting experience, and contact information to Boston Casting Submit 4 at gmail.com. Boston Casting Submit, the number 4, at gmail.com. Boston Casting also looking for, this is for a separate project, but uh, Boston Casting also looking for a bunch of 18-year-olds who can pass as 16-year-olds. This is for an upcoming production and the must-have acting experience. Send your information, headshots to bostoncastingtv1 at gmail.com. That's bostoncastingtv1, the number one, at gmail.com. Uh, last one for Boston Casting, looking for a rowing team here in Massachusetts in the Boston region, uh, right by the Charles. Uh, you'll see crew teams uh, going up and down all times of the year. Um, but yeah, Boston Casting looking for a rowing team. Uh, this, is, this is shooting in Boston on October 25th, but there is a fitting date on the 20th. I'm assuming you're going to go in, get your crew team uh, uniform, your spandex. Do you wear spandex as a crew team? I'm not sure. Seems like it would make sense. I'm not a rower. But uh, yeah, so there's a fitting on the 20th of this month, and uh, the shoot date is on October 25th. Uh, Send all your information, including the names of the entire crew. Uh, Send that to bostoncastingsubmit2 at gmail.com. That's that's bostoncastingsubmit2 at gmail.com. You must be 18 years or older. 
Lastly, CP casting, uh, looking for both men and women over 18 years old who can portray an Indian American graduate student. This is a paid gig for a Netflix feature film. This is on camera acting. Uh, this shoots in Boston between November and mid February. Uh, this should take about two days of shooting for this role. Uh, you're looking for someone who is a SAG AFTRA member. Uh, so if you if you know anyone who who can portray an Indian American graduate student, man or woman. Uh, email cpcastingsubmission at gmail.com, cpcastingsubmission at gmail.com. So uh, you don't get too many of these too often uh, on camera speaking roles. Uh, usually for these uh, casting calls, a lot of uh, background work, a lot of body double work. Um, but yeah, so you have the opportunity to speak not only in a, in a commercial, but also for Netflix feature film. So again, thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, give us a share, comment down below, join the conversation. Also, you can follow us on our social media in addition to Facebook. We're on Twitter and Instagram at Hub on Hollywood. Also, listen to us if you're on the go uh, to uh, to us on any of the major podcasting streaming services: iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. We're all out there. Don't worry. Now. This is big. This is big news. Big deal. Um, a lot of rumors coming around. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, water being dumped on a roaring fire, uh, sort sort of speak. Now the MCU looks like it's going to be going deep into the multiverse. How deep? That's the main question. Uh, so first, we learned Doctor Strange would be in the next Spider-Man movie, starring Tom Holland for part three. Then we found out. Jamie Foxx is on board to reprise his role as Electro from The Amazing Spider-Man. That's from the Andrew Garfield universe, The Amazing Spider-Man uh, 1 and 2 that 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 stopped after part 2 because it, it flopped uh, majorly or did not perform anywhere near as well as the studios uh, hoped for. Uh, but Electro... Apparently in talks, in negotiations to appear in the next Spider-Man 3 movie. And then that opened the door of like, okay, so Electro is in the new movie. Why? Oh, wait, Doctor Strange is coming in to hang out with Spider-Man to act as his new mentor. He, we're told, this movie is going to transition into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So we're going to get some multi multi-universal uh, cross-time-bending uh, events going on in the MCU. Then this week, the, the rumors exploded. They, they, they went everywhere. Rumors began circulating on the web, no pun intended, <laughs> that now not only can or may Electro show up in Spider-Man 3, but also Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Now, the internet is exploding with rumors. Uh, there are reports citing inside sources uh, that Andrew Garfield is on board to reprise his role as Spider-Man. However, Tobey Maguire, he's on the fence. He's demanding more money. He's playing hard to get. Now, th again, this just building and building, more people coming out, more sources coming through. But Sony... They've come out and, and, and have kind of uh, dampened that fire a little bit, I think. Um, in an interview with ET Canada, a spokesperson for Sony says those rumored castings are not confirmed. Now, though it's not confirmed, that doesn't mean or it doesn't say the studio is not trying to bring back Garfield and Maguire. Now, reports citing inside sources say Garfield again is on board. Maguire may need a little more uh, nudging to get to get you know, to get on board. But, you know, if they are in negotiations, Sony is not going to want to release that out publicly because then everybody is is for sure going to go crazy. And then that gives Tobey Maguire uh, more leverage, more weight to demand more money if he so pleases. So here's the question. If Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, and Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man, come into Spider-Man 3 and meet Tom Holland's version, uh, how is that going to look? Are they going to be a a very important part of the plot? Are they going to be throughout this whole thing kind of like uh, um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse that we saw the animated version of? Or is this going to be a small cameo? They're going to be back for 30 seconds and then they're they're gone. Or are they just going to be included in the final big boss battle? Uh, we're going to be... There's a lot of questions. Uh, but what do you prefer? Do you prefer... 
uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man returning? Uh, do you prefer them to be in the entire movie if they do come back, or should they, should it be used sparingly? Are you waiting for that meme uh, interaction where they're all pointing fingers at each other? So I, I don't know what uh, what I really want. I know it would be amazing to see uh, Tobey Toby Maguire come back, Andrew Garfield come back as well. Uh, and then, you know, where do you go from there when you're looking at the bigger picture of the, of the, of the cinematic universe? Of course, Doctor Strange going into his own movie, WandaVision, looking like she's playing with realities in different dimensions. And so I think this is the part where, they're, where Marvel is going super weird and they're going to go full, full throttle into it. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. Do you do you think the Spider-Men, the three Spider-Verses, will converge and and uh, point to each other, <laughs> or or do you think these are just rumors? We're probably just gonna see Electro, Jamie Fox. Uh, there's big talk about Craven the Hunter coming back. That would be amazing too. Uh, amazing Spider-Man. But yeah, so again, these are all rumors, speculation. So take it with a grain of salt, but I really want to know what, what do you think is in store for uh, for the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Do you want to see Toby back? Do you want to see Andrew back? Uh, do you want to see them replace Tom Holland? Just kick him out of the MCU? Just become best friends and crime-solving pals? Uh, I don't know. Comment down below. Uh, for this week's Hub on Hollywood, I'm James. We will see you next week. Bye.